I'm John Weisbarth, and I'm a huge fan of the tiny house movement that's exploding across the nation. The average American home is 2,300 square feet, but lots of people are deciding that bigger isn't necessarily better, and they're choosing to live in homes that are just one-tenth the average size. Whether they're after financial independence or desire to live with less, inspired homeowners are starting to think outside the blueprints of everyday building, and that's where I come in. I travel across the country with my partner, tiny house expert Zach Giffen, and together we help people build their mini dream homes. We've been looking for home. <laughs> and get them prepared for the extreme downsizing it takes to live in under 500 square feet. I don't know if I ever want more stuff than I could fit in the back of my car. Trust me, tiny homes are the next big thing. So you've been up here three weeks. Are you loving it? Oh, I love this area, John. Front range of the Rockies, right up about 8,000 feet. Yeah. Look at that view. Oh my gosh. You can see Pike's Peak back there in the background. Literally off the grid. Yep. This bill I'm really excited about. 12 years ago, David and Kristen found their forever home. We searched for a long time to find mm. this place. We looked at a lot of property and just Wanted views, wanted privacy, wanted, you know, a cute enough house, and... This was it. Yeah. In their 1,200-square-foot home in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, they both enjoyed their ability to work from home while being off the grid in these beautiful surroundings. I'm a writer. I write personal growth books. And I have a software company, and I do integration software for electric and gas utilities. David and Kristen were living their dream in Colorado until two years ago when everything changed. The fire is very much alive. The smoke still billows from the Lower North Fork fire. The day of the fire started like any other day. And at some point that morning, I noticed some smoke. Down Foxton Road, uh, we've got reports of a fire. And then I had a friend coming over. And when she drove down my road and she saw that cloud, she said, we need to start packing. In just four hours, the fire exploded from only one and a half acres to over 100 threatening more than 900 homes and leaving little time to evacuate. You have 30 seconds, what do you want? And basically we just started loading up the cars and then we left. The fire burned more than 4,000 acres, destroyed 23 homes and killed three people. When Kristen and David returned to their home 10 days later, their worst nightmares were realized. The house was gone and I remember just everything kind of went tunnel vision, and I felt like I was underwater. We've been called for a number of challenging tiny house builds, but none of those calls were as emotional or compelling as this one. We immediately took the job with one goal in mind, give this couple their dream home and their lives back. Zach's been up here for three weeks framing up this tiny house that will be 16 by 24 and have 20 foot ceilings at its peak. The home needs to have three separate sleeping quarters, including one high loft for the master bedroom two offices so Kristen and David can both work from home, a full kitchen, and a full-size bathroom, all within 500 square feet. We need to try to design the home so that it incorporates physical items from the environment around them. Make this off-the-grid house self-sustainable by installing a double-rack solar panel system to power all their essentials. And if that's not enough, because of the remote location, the build is behind schedule, and Kristen and David do not want to have to renew their lease on their rental home which expires in less than a week. This is just, it's breathtaking, man. While Zach continues to put up the pre-installed walls and get the structure for the 15-foot high loft built, I'm going back down the mountain to meet up with David and Kristen at the house they've been renting for the past two years. Hi. Hi, how, how are, are you? you? Good to see you. Great, great to see you. Give me a hug. Hi. Wow, this is an awesome place. Oh, thank you. This is a lot more suburban than yes. what you guys are going to be, isn't it? It is. It's a beautiful house. Hey, it's been hey, it's cool. Good to see you. you. I just was actually, I kind of caught this out of the corner of my yeah. eye. Are these the pictures you were telling me about? Yes. That's our old house. Oh, I love what you do with the deck there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, I recognize that to you, but yep. it looks a little different with trees. It yeah. does. Yeah. yeah, right after the fire. That's our first visit out. Whoa. Almost looks like a moonscape. Mm -hmm. The house is ashen and everything. A lot of times when we come to this point, the paring down, mm -hmm. 
those are tough decisions to make. And so we'll play a game, we'll give them 10 minutes to, to just force you to make decisions like that. Mm -hmm. But that was a situation you guys were in two Three years ago. Could I see what it is you were able to grab? Yeah. And for you, mm -hmm. a totally different situation to not even be there. Uh, I mean, how do you respond to that? I can't even express to you how physically ill I became. And then for you, you have a totally different experience because you are there in it and have to, you know, have to grab this. Right. I had to make this last minute decisions about what to take. I was in a panic mode and I started grabbing some ridiculous things. Like I was walking into the doorway with my computer monitor and I just stopped and put the computer monitor down and walked away from that. I wanted some comfort items for us and I grabbed David's down slippers. I wanted him to have his slippers. She said, I got your slippers. I said, you got what? <laughs> <laughs> Another David comfort item. He's had this jacket since high school. There was about four of us that were able to get these, and we all hung out together all the time. It's just become one of those things that I'm attached to. And what's yeah, this? this? This is a down pillow, like circa probably 19... 60 or something. This was in my grandparents' house. I really almost can't sleep without this pillow. Yeah, and don't forget the last piece. Oh, there's another. <laughs> All right, I'm 48 years old. <laughs> and I sleep with a stuffed animal. <laughs> I'll be halfway asleep, and, and, and she'll be like, where's my leopard? <laughs> One of our dear friends who died of cancer gave this to me, and uh, I've had this for a long time, and this leopard was definitely coming with. I really do appreciate you guys you know, showing me this stuff. And it, I can tell that there's a lot of emotion this in, in this stuff and obviously talking about this. Why then the decision to go back to that land, to go back to, you know, where this happened? This really is home. And we've been looking for home. David and Kristen lost almost everything two years ago in the fire. Now we have a chance to help them resurrect their lives by constructing the tiny dream home. Their old home was a 1,200 square foot house that they fully customized to fit their style and all their needs. It also had full oversized windows and exposed wood, which brought the landscape into the design. They had a beautiful full-size kitchen, a full bathroom, and a master bedroom with a magnificent view. We need to figure out a way to get all these rooms into this tiny house, plus private office space for both of them so they continue to work from home for years to come. We have six days left before David and Kristen's lease is up, so we need to get this tiny home moving ready as soon as possible. Being off the grid, David and Kristen needed an alternative energy source to power their home. They decided to go with solar again, and we've already installed replacement panels for the ones that were damaged in the fire. So while Zach installs the power station for the new solar panel system, I need to make sure we're giving this home enough juice to fit their needs. Yeah, so this is what's left. We had this rack here and another rack there. When the fire came through, it was probably gusting 80 to 100 miles an hour, and it flipped the whole thing off down the cliff. It, so it's down there? It's down? Down, yeah, it's down off the side of the cliff there. Oh, man. Do you think about wind turbines at all? Because we're getting a lot of wind. Oh, it's very gusty. Yeah. Putting a wind turbine here just tears them apart. Got to have that consistent wind, so it didn't work out. Do you get enough power? Absolutely. You just have to think about what you're doing all the time. You don't want to be running the vacuum cleaner and the well pump at the same time. We don't have a coffee pot. We don't have toasters. All that stuff has to be planned. It doesn't sound all that easy. Why not pay the power company to try and run some lines out here? Well, they would. I actually had them come in to talk about it. And you can see the, all the rock around here. Yeah. They'd have to blast for every single pole. It ended up running in excess of $30,000 to bring power down. Being out here and off the grid and almost homesteading and solar is a good option for you. That's a great option. There's about 300 plus days a year of sunshine. For me, living off the grid is really about the independence of it. I just like living this way. We have propane, then we have internet that we get wirelessly off a mountain across the way. Other than that, we are not tied to anything. All the power is my own, and I like that independence. I am the power plant manager, if you will. And when everybody else is out of power because a tree fell on a line somewhere, I come home and turn on the lights, you know? 
Solar power is a great renewable energy solution for tiny house living, especially because you often have far fewer electronics and appliances than you would in a standard size home. Big or small, some other ways you can provide renewable energy would be through wind turbines, which can reduce your energy usage by up to 90%. Or if you live on the banks of a river, hydropower can convert that running water into usable watts. Today we have landscapers here clearing out some of the trees that were burnt in the fire to make room for the giant patio that we'll be creating. Since one of our other challenges is incorporating their surroundings into the new home, I want to see if we can use some of these trees in the rest of the construction of the house. Not only will it save us some money on the lumber, but it will literally bring the nature they love into the build. So is this the one we're going to try and save? Yeah, this is the one we want. All right, boys, let's see what we can't do about getting this thing down safely. Yeah, yeah. my main concern right now are the solar panels. Exactly. We cannot hit those. Our other issue is we got a little bit of wind kicking up. you can feel that. It's, and it comes uh, up quick. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're spot breezes. They come in all fast. Standing right here, you can absolutely feel that wind gusting. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Well, just steady pressure yeah. right now. Here it comes. Perfect. <laughs> Nice job. Nicely done, guys. Nice pulling, guys. Now we got to pull this thing up the hill, though, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's <laughs> going to be the fun part. <laughs> it's day two of our build. Zach and the crew have finished putting up the shell of the tiny house, and they even got the roof on. Now, with the rest of the crew cleaning the remaining trees, plastering the interior walls, and getting the weather-resistant vinyl siding on the exterior, Zach is taking one of the trees we cut down to a local mill so we can make some lumber to use in the rest of the project. We got quite a setup around here. Thank you. That's the tree that we brought down earlier, right? Yes. I think it's going to be really special getting a tree that was, you know, just a burned eyesore off their property and turn it into something beautiful for their house. I'm a big fan of repurposing wood. Let's get it loaded on the mill and take it from there. All right. Zach, once these arms come all the way up, give the log a roll onto the bed. OK. David and Kristen both need a separate office, which we're going to fill with wooden storage cubbies and a space for each of them to work. So Zach is going to put the trees we chopped down through the milling machine to cut two-inch thick pieces of solid pine that will become beautiful desktops. Oh, that looks so good already. Let's oh, turn yeah. it over so we can see our good colors. OK. Wow. The fire changes the sugars into wood. From the fire, we get all these chocolate uh -huh. colors in here. This is the blue stain that you see typically with beetle kill. You sure. Some more down, some here. down here. Well, just having wood that's this beautiful inspires you to you know, do something special with it. You can't get it at any lumber yard, right? Not from your local <laughs> lumber yard. Most people think that damaged or dead wood is useless, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Trees damaged by flood, fire, or insect infestation are a viable source of lumber for any project. In some cases, the damage actually gives the wood its own unique color patches. The lumber created from these trees can be used for cabinets, flooring, furniture, or even baseball bats. Saving these trees or salvage logging is extremely eco-friendly as the practice gives the healthy trees that remain a better chance to flourish and grow. The fire was two years ago? Yeah. Looking right in this hole right here. OK. That was where the foundation and everything was. You were away on business, is that right? That's at the right. time? Mm -hmm. So you were, it was just you here? Yes. Uh, in the morning, I noticed a, the, the smoke cloud, and I could see it over there. There had been a controlled burn in the area. And as the morning went on, I noticed it getting bigger and bigger. Wow. I can't imagine. I got the dogs first, the yeah. cat. And I had my clothes that I had, and that was it. Came home to have to buy new clothes. Knew everything. 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 There was one point after the fire where I thought, I don't know if I ever want more stuff than I could fit in the back of my car. You know, and there was just something about that. There was a simpleness to it, being able to focus on what really matters rather than having all this stuff that we have to manage and take care of. We almost weren't going to return here. And then I started thinking about 
tiny homes, and I said, let's have this adventure. Well, let's go down there and, and find out exactly you know, what it is you guys need, and okay. I'll tell you if we can make it happen or not. All right. Sound, Sound good? good? Because getting back to this land is so important to David and Kristen, David has actually been working with Zach on the build for the past few days, almost acting as a general contractor. Now that Zach, David, and the team have this 500-square-foot home structurally sound, it's time to take a closer look at what we have left to do in the remaining four days. And this is the kitchen. Are you guys kitchen people? For being as far out as we are, we will prepare a lot of meals. Yeah, and I do, so, I do like to cook. She doesn't like to cook. Uh -huh. Gotcha. David and Kristen ordered all the cabinets and appliances, but because they've never built tiny before, they have no idea how all these items are going to fit into the space allotted for the kitchen. I'd love to see bathroom. Sure. Right over here. You can see where oh, yeah. still underway in here. Oh, yeah. There's um, a little tile work to do in this one. They poured the shower pan. You can see, but we've still got to put the base in there and then we've got to do the walls. And like the kitchen, David and Kristen already have some big home amenities purchased to fill out this bathroom. I just hope we can make it fit into the space. All right, and then a little closet here. <laughs> just big enough you can jump out and surprise someone. Right. Uh -huh. That we are hoping to have be actually a pantry storage. We are going to downsize a lot, but then they're going to be essentials. You guys need storage space not for all your extra things, but really for supplies. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, there's obviously another big part to this I house here. I jump up there now. This is the bedroom loft area? It is, yeah. Wow, that's pretty big. You know, well, it's not the, it's, well, again, we have a king size bed. Yeah. That ain't going to fit up there. No more dog sleeping with you. <laughs> These are the offices you were talking about. This is Kristen's office. OK. Mm -hmm. It's tight, for sure. What is it that you need out of this space? So I write in kind of two different ways. I sit on my bed, yeah. and I need a desk. So I like things that uh, are functional yet comfortable and really make the space work. Desk and a bed, OK. <laughs> Let's yeah. check out the other, sure. the other office. This area here. I would like to have be a functional office where I can have my computer, monitors, I've, we've got printers, file cabinet, small file cabinet. Wow, that's a lot to jam into 50 square feet. I do work for myself, have my own company, and I work from the home. And if that office doesn't work, none of this works. But I also like to be a guest room. That wasn't in the plans. Two years ago, David and Kristen lost everything they owned in a forest fire. With only four days left on the lease for the house they're renting, we still have a lot to do. And David just threw us a big curveball. The original plans did not account for his office to be a convertible room that can also be a guest room. And in under 50 square feet, that's gonna be tough. We love having friends come over and spend time, family. We need to be able to put them somewhere. Does the bed and the desk have to be open at the same time, or can it be a convertible thing? Convertible, totally convertible. Okay. In the past, Zach's been able to come up with some great ideas for convertible furniture, like the Murphy bed that turned into a couch and a kitchen island that turns into a movable dog crate. But in such a small room, I think Zach's going to have his work cut out for him making this desk bed. Your design aesthetic. What else is it that you guys are looking for out of this space? There's a lot of wood. Yeah. So we kind of have a, a natural, modern thing going on. We really like very simple, clean lines. But I also want natural wood and things that tie it into the environment. In our old house, we had these beautiful handcrafted barn wood doors that David made. And we would love to have something like that yeah, here. here. So we take advantage of you. We got to make both of these offices not just an office, but a guest room, too. Yep. And then the last thing is the look that we want, which is a, a mountain modern. Part of our mission is not only to make David and Kristen an amazing home, but to rebuild some of what they lost in the fire and incorporate it into the design. When Zach and I were clearing out trees, we found the charred remains of a totem pole. Turns out the totem pole was a surprise anniversary present from David to Kristen. Five years ago, David had a local artist create it. So with the help of that original artist, we made this totem pole rise from the ashes. And I'm driving Kristen there right now for our big surprise. I'd like to ask you a little bit about your friends. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you have some pretty amazing friends that are willing to come out there and help you guys. Our community rallied around us in the most incredible way. Right away, I went to my best friend's house and lived in her basement for two weeks. She just made dinner for us every night and, you know, we decided to sift through the ashes of our home, and that was no small task. People set up sifting tables, and it was just ashy and dirty and horrible. And I said to everybody, 
please treat it gently. And they were loving and gentle. And they would show me what they uncovered and say, do you want this? Do you want that? And we would celebrate the little victories when we'd find something. Wow. What would you think if I told you Zach and I found something really special and you're about to see it? <laughs> I don't even know what I think. Well, David's getting ready right now. Really? He wants to show it to you as soon as we get there. He said it's going to put a big smile on your face. That's awesome. That's going to be great. These guys have been through so much together. It really feels amazing to be able to surprise Kristen like this. Kristen, wait right here for a second, okay? I'm going to go get David. But I think it's important for David to be the one to show this to her. Like a flash when we Ready? Mm hmm Okay. Beautiful. It's come through fire and survived. It's earned its stripes. It'll wow. stand. Welcome home. Can I hug my totem pole? Hug your totem pole. <laughs> Mm. It's really it's amazing. It's perfect. Resurrecting the wooden totem is just one part of using some of the old to mix with the new to make this home amazing. Zach is planning to use some of the charred wood that we cleared earlier for the desk and the doors in David and Kristen's offices, but we've got quite a lot of it. I'm wondering what else we can use it for. So. We're going to Lewiston, Montana to visit the fire lookout. This off the grid, two story, 392 square foot tiny house was designed by architect Jeff Sheldon and made to blend into the mountains with its stonework on the bottom floor and reclaimed wood railing made from charred wood that surround the wraparound deck. As rustic as this home looks on the outside, the inside is thoughtful and comfortable. Because this home is off the grid, the kitchen has a wood-burning stove for cooking that's also used to heat the entire space in the winter. A Hoosier cabinet is used for food storage, but also has a slide-out countertop for extra space for either food preparation or a desk area. Upstairs, there's a multifunctional room. During the day, it provides a sitting room with a couch and two chairs. And at night, those same pieces of furniture convert into a comfortable place that can sleep up to four. All the bedding is actually hidden under the floor in a secret cedar cubby. There's also a full 360 degree view of the forest surrounding the house. The wraparound windows and the giant skylight provide light from every direction and saves on electricity, which is key in off the grid living. The little electricity they do use is provided by a small solar panel on the roof. The shutters on the outside of the home are made with reclaimed wood from the area. They're on hinges, so they open and close depending on the conditions. When they're closed, they help keep the weather out and the heat in during the cold winter months. Back in Colorado, we're gonna take some inspiration from the fire lookout in Montana by using repurposed charred wood we got from the trees we took down the other day to make a railing for the loft. David and Kristen's tiny home design has a 15 foot high sleeping loft above the kitchen and bathroom, which is a lot higher than most of our lofts that we build. Zach's called in a local carpenter to help him install this rail for safety. Because the loft space is only big enough for a bed and an end table, this rail is going to have a wired front so it doesn't make the space feel smaller than it is. Is this it right here? Yeah. This post actually came from the fire damaged trees. I think it fits their style. It flows well with what you got going on in here. With the salvaged wood post installed for the railing, our mountain modern look is starting to come together. It's day four of our build and Zach is working his magic trying to figure out how to make two multi-purpose office slash guest rooms work in under 50 square feet for each room. The rooms may be small, but this is a huge task. And with only three days until David and Kristen's lease runs out on their rental home, every second counts. Here it comes. Wrap it up. We gotta get the hell out of here. I'm in the middle of building all the features of the office and a storm is rolling in. 
Up here, we are so exposed that these storms can be pretty devastating when they hit. With only three days left to finish this house, we cannot afford to lose this afternoon. A powerful thunderstorm is rolling through the area, and the lightning and high winds leave us no other option but to shut down. With just three days left, this storm has put finishing the project on time in serious jeopardy. It's day five and the storm has moved on, but it's left us with only two days before David and Kristen's rental unit lease runs out. This is the Murphy bed desk? Yeah, this is the desk. So this is part of that tree that we took down. We're really running short on time and we don't want to let this family down. This is critical. We got to make this work. So let me help you. Can, we, yeah, can you please. put me to work here? Let's just let's get going. Hey, just flip it or what? Yeah, walk it around. OK. This is more or less going to rest up in here. OK. While Zach and I are working on getting all the pieces of this convertible yeah. desk bed fitted properly, we have the rest of the crew inside getting all the trim up and painting the house from top to bottom in warm, neutral tones so that we can add pops of color with their appliances and furniture. Then we're installing dark wood ceilings in the offices to complement the lighter tones. Now that Zach is getting started building barn doors, I found a local pyographer who specialized in charred wood artwork. I think she may be able to help us create something special for David and Kristen. Hi there. Hi. Are you John? I am. Are you Julie? Yes, I am. Okay. Nice to meet you. Come on in. I was really excited when I found you on the internet. This is actually some of my work, if you want to take a look at it. Oh, I do. I like this very much. Thanks. It's funny. You know, it's it's got a texture to mm -hmm. it as well. It's almost engraved in there. Mm -hmm. You can't tell on the internet when you're looking at it like that. You just need to get your hands on it, because that's part of the reason why I love pyrography. It's yeah. just so tactile. You know, it can really feel the design instead of just having it two-dimensional. Yeah, it's almost like it's carved, but this is with fire? It is. Um, it's kind of a soldering iron, actually. Okay. Um, on this one, I burnt too deeply into it and ended up getting this nice, like, peppercorn kind of texture. Totally and I realized peppercorn. you can actually manipulate more of the, the feeling of it. And so by controlling the temperature, mm -hmm. you control how deep and how dark the burn is. Yes. That's where you get the really awesome texture. Yeah. You know, I told you a little bit about it on the phone, about Kristen and David, and fire took their home. Yeah. yeah. But they're rising from the ashes, if yeah. you will. And I want to have something that reflects that boldness. Let me show you this. This is Kristen's favorite quote, I am restored to wonder. And this whole process really is about a rebirth from the ash. Absolutely. So what I want to do is have you create something for them using that quote. <laughs> All right. And I think it's going to be a really meaningful piece to accent their house. That sounds awesome. You like that? Yeah. If what you create is even half as beautiful as some of these pieces, I know they'll love it. I think Kristen is really going to love this artwork Julie's going to make. With only two days left in the build, Zach is hard at work creating all the pieces for the offices and the rest of the tiny house. He's continuing to put all the reclaimed lumber from the trees we cleared to good use, and he's even using some leftover building material to make the frame of Kristen's bed for her office. All right. All right. This is the moment of truth. We find out if I measured correctly. <laughs> Yeah, so as soon as it clears like that, all right, now it should go. All right. Yeah, that's pretty good. Perfect. Sweet. So this is reclaimed lumber from the wood pile out back. And now it turns into Kristen's daybed. Very good. I wanted to make that a height where she could sit on it. That She'll be able be to nice. sit in the chair over here, or if she wants, she can just kind of come over here to the, to the bed and use that. I think that's clever. Yeah, that'll be good. Cool. The desk is going to kind of come over to about here. Okay. Maybe span about to there. You think that this is about the size that she was looking for? I think for? that's perfect. Yeah, I think that'll work. All right. Glad nice. you like it. We're making great progress on this build, but we're still playing catch up because of the storm. These tiny offices have a long ways to go, and we only have a day and a half left. It's day six of our build, and we have to bring this project to completion. Zach is finishing the barn doors that he's making out of the trees we cut down a few days ago. This reclaimed wood on the office doors is going to really help tie the main living area together with that mountain modern look. Isn't that nice? I love this. And the live edge here where you can see the, the bark on the outside and the colors pops. Yeah, you see all this blue in there? Yeah. That actually means this was a pine beetle tree before it was burned. 
Pine beetles are this kind of foreign invasive species. It's yeah. not very nice for trees, They're killing but it tree makes already. really, really nice wood. And then over here, you see kind of the reds and some of the browns, and that's from the fire. Oh, wow. So we're having everything all in this wood, and we'll have a little piece of that tree in every single room in the house. Nice. Oh, man, I love this house. This is a real party space, if you ask me. <laughs> Can we write that into the contract? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Zach requests a party at the end of the build because he doesn't want to leave. Yeah. It's the last day of our build, and we're pretty much out of time. We were able to lay the kitchen out just right in order to get all their appliances into the space. To add as much storage to the offices as possible, we're going vertical with cubbies that will sit eight feet off the ground, and the crew is working into the night to finish the most important thing, David's desk bed. Seven days ago, we came to Conifer, Colorado to help David and Kristen rebuild their tiny dream home, and in the process, their lives. Over the past week, we helped them get some closure from all they've lost and prepare them for life off the grid in their brand new tiny home. Now it's time to show them what we've done and welcome them into the tiny house community. Hey guys. Hi. Come on oh in. Oh my gosh. It's been about two and a half years in the making, hasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Zach and I are gonna stay outside at first. We're gonna let you guys go in and discover the space. Oh my gosh. And then we'll come in and show off some of the things that we like the best. Okay, I'm just so excited. So many emotions. I think kid at Christmas time, just having stepped out of this process and getting to walk in today and not having any idea. One of the biggest things that we talked about early on was the offices. So I, I suppose I'm anxious to see what was done there because it has to work. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right, let's go. Okay. Let's get in there. Go ahead, guys. All right. Oh, my god. I'm excited for you guys. Uh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is completely the next chapter of our lives, and I'm thrilled beyond belief. Yeah, I can't wait to live in this space. You walk in there, and it just pulls you in. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm about to cry a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so you think you want to live here, huh? <laughs> it's oh. so beautiful. Look at those end tables. <sighs> I think I'm still in disbelief. It feels like it's this model home. This is incredible. I want a vacation here, you know? Yeah, that's what it feels like. It feels like a little resort. It does. You know? Hey guys, <laughs> come on out, come on out. <laughs> so, so you like it? Like, yeah. This is, this is amazing. What do you think about the colors? Because if we did too much yeah. color on the walls, then it would compete with all of this. I agree. Now these, these accents yep. pop, they stand out, and it's not overwhelming. And it still gives it light and airy, but it gives it all that color that yes. you wanted. This is not just a stylish end table. This is your table for entertaining. It's from Resource Furniture. It just telescopes out. Okay, wow. yeah. it takes five leaves. It can fit 10 people comfortably. <laughs> we can actually move our couch over, and we can expand the table, and we can expand it for four, for six, for eight, yeah. for 10. That's incredible. Now, this is a good size kitchen. There is no compromise. These are state-of-the-art, high-end appliances, top-end finish, marble, this backsplash, the metal cabinets, everything, the custom refrigerator. It's these colors. It's red and cream and white. It's all the colors that are in the house just pulled together. And if you want to talk about high-end finishes. Yes, sir. The bathroom. I mean, you can't find a bathroom like this in most spas. No. <laughs> right? No. It is top-end finishes from the pebble tile down there, the tile on the floor, all yeah. on the walls. Hey, Let's check out your bedroom, OK? All right. This is very spacious up here. Also, two full-size closets. There's nothing tiny about these closets. And then the last thing is every morning when you wake up, first thing you see is this view. You're always reminded of what brought you back to this place. Yeah. Yeah. The bedroom is just, it's cozy. You know, it's cozy but open, too. It's not a big space, but it just feels so spacious up there. I want to get to your office. I, I, I'm, let's go. OK. Oh, my god. Let's talk about the woodwork, and let's okay. talk about yes. the style a little yes. bit. These doors are what really yeah. bring it out. All this wood came from the same source. Yeah. These doors 
are art. <laughs> They're just perfect. What about behind the doors? Oh my God, I love my office. <laughs> oh. It is so exactly what I want. It feels so welcoming and I just want to hang out there and spend the afternoon writing. It blows me away. Yeah, I mean, so, we wanted to make sure yeah. you had storage. I just want to stay in here and never leave. <laughs> <laughs> you can absolutely do that, but not right now because we have a lot more to see, so come on. Oh, oh my God. Oh, this bed is beautiful. I know this thing that converts something. into something. <laughs> You've heard of a Murphy bed. Mm -hmm. So, John, there's a little latch. Maybe you can grab it. And then the whole unit just folds. Funny. That's perfect. And it's a huge desk. Yeah. Oh, so beautiful. Perfect. If I leave my stuff on here, will it fold down and stay <laughs> and stay? You're asking the right question. Exactly. <laughs> this, I was so excited for this part. I mean, that, that really is the thing about yeah. this desk in particular, mm -hmm. is that, you know, where do you put your st stuff? You don't right. want to have to kind of remove things every time you do it. So. Yeah. You know, this desk just stays totally parallel. You notice it's really just gravity that just keeps it totally perfectly balanced like that. Do you think that, this room will work for you? That will do it. That's all I need. I needed a guest bed, and I needed a desk where I have plenty of space to work, and you've done both and of those. Storage. And some storage. And storage. storage. The last thing I wanted to point out before we go outside is right over here. I am restored to wonder. Yes. This is your quote. Yes. What does that quote mean for you? Uh, well. I mean, it really means what's happening right now. You know, <laughs> being returned to something and wonder, being in this house now is just, I'm full of wonder. As you can tell, this is one of the reclaimed yeah. pieces of wood. It blows us away. It really, it's so touching. I just envision many a spring and summer and fall evening, maybe even a couple in the winter, I don't know. You guys out here enjoying this part of your patio and just the spectacular views. It's a really big part of the reason that you guys are here. It's just the inspiration that it is. It's the memories. And this is the beginning of the future because, I mean, this really is, like Kristen said, all brand new. And yeah. it just is so amazing. This house is new. This right. place is not new. You'd lived here for 10 years before. And you guys described that house as the dream house. How does this house compare first impression it just feels like that chapter closed and this is the new chapter this is our new home and our new life yeah this is about turning the page rising from the ashes and the only thing left now is to give you these oh. bad boys <laughs> the keys oh, to your new tiny house congratulations oh you guys my gosh. Thank, thank you guys you. so much yeah. i can tell you want to, i can tell i can tell come on bring it in. all right come here <laughs> As the newest members of the tiny house movement, David and Kristen are proving you can always go home. But how do they like their new tiny lifestyle? Are they able to work from home but still accommodate guests? Do they get enough energy from their solar panels? We checked in with them a few months after they moved in to find out. Do we have some light? Are we yeah, please. on with our solar? <laughs> the solar system, it just is better than I had ever imagined that it could be. Look at our old house. During the day, I just, you know, I've never let you turn on a light. You I know? know. What about if I open the refrigerator? Can I leave the door open for a little bit? You can leave the door open for a little bit. Let me see. Yeah. I'm going to see what you see do. It? Open. Okay. See, if, until I start to twitch. Uh huh. Okay, I'm twitching. You can close it now. <laughs> it is just about as good as living on the grid, if not better. And so I'm using a lot more water than I normally would. I know. But it's all right. The biggest draw we have is the well pump because it's about 300 feet down and it's got to pump all that water up. And you don't want to be doing something that requires a lot of water, vacuuming and drying your hair all at the same time. So you do have to think about things like that. How about you go and tell me how much power you used after I wash these? All right. So this is our little status meter. Even though it's pretty cloudy outside right now, it's positive, which means that it's still producing more power than we're using. The power is completely topped off. We have 100%, 99%. We really don't want for power at all. I'm still wondering where we're going to put our food. These cabinets are really narrow. I know. <laughs> kind of got some space here. We've got magnetic spice jars. We couldn't put a spice rack or anything in here. Storing food and goods like that, it's a big challenge. It's remote. 
To get to the store, we have to drive 25 minutes. And this house is really small, so we don't have a lot of storage space. In our offices, we put up all these little wood shelves for photographs. And that is one of the things that we carried from the fire as uh, you know, framed pictures. And there was just no space to put that. And we put new shelves in the pantry closet next to the bathroom. We've got room to put a lot more bathroom stuff. We don't have a medicine cabinet. Now, the end of August, I think, will be working pretty well for me. Right, that, that'll, that'll be fine. Baby. Yeah. Just a little quieter. Oh. A little quieter. Sorry. You can't actually be anywhere in the house and not hear the other person on the phone. So things like that, you know, take some getting used to. However, writing from that space feels really good. I've got the windows on either side, and I can just sit there and look out at the view. Can you just pop that little guy there? Right. The wonderful thing about the desk is if I have somebody coming to stay and they need to stay in the bed, all of that stuff can stay on the desk. I don't have to move it. Just push it down and the bed folds down and there it is, done. They leave and I pull it back up and everything's still there. That's really cool stuff. I like that. I've been having a problem with trying to get down those steps. One of the things that, uh, that we're going to add for sure is a handrail. Hey, guys. Want to go outside? Hey, let's go on. to walk. I know. I know. We know. Come on. We know. We know. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> My advice for people who are considering living in a tiny home is just go for it. I love what we built. It's been an adventure and returning here, and sometimes I can't even really believe that we're here again, you yeah. know, after such a long journey getting back. And then we go and sit on our patio and look out at this view, and it's amazing. <laughs>